The movie begins by showing a family throwing their pet orange cat, Thunder, into the street. They left Thunder alone and immediately rushed over with their car. Frightened, Thunder tried to chase the car, but it didn't work. He attempted to find his way home, but the journey was too difficult. He ran here and there until he fell on a bench by the side of the road. That's where Thunder met a little dog. He asked the dog to accompany him for a while, but that arrogant dog rejected him and left. After that, Thunder tried to find a new employer, but he was instantly dismissed by the people he met. Until finally, he saw a black cat. Thunder chased the cat until he reached the front of a big house. Thunder was interested in entering the house. Unfortunately, when he arrived at the yard, he was already blocked by a large guard dog. The fearful Thunder ran away from that house, but the guard dog was still trying to chase him. The chasing scene occurred. Thunder ran around, avoiding that big dog. Finally, the dog stopped chasing him when Thunder entered a terrible courtyard. Thunder intended to enter the house. Unfortunately, the cat-only front entrance was locked. Thunder climbed up and entered the attic with the windows open. After successfully entering, Thunder began to explore the attic, but suddenly he saw many strange things that surprised him and looked creepy. The attic was filled with worn-out magic tools and no longer used. The panic thunder nearly destroyed half of the attic, and he also tried to get out but couldn't because the window was closed. Fearful, Thunder then met a white mouse. They were both scared from shock. Thunder then chased the white rat until he went downstairs and fell in the front room of the house. At that time, he met an inhospitable rabbit named Jack. The first time met Thunder and Jack pointed a spatula at him because he thought Thunder was going to catch that little mouse named Maggie. Then they threw Thunder out of the house. Since it was raining, Thunder looked for a place to shelter, but again he entered the house. This time he fell into the basement of the house. Thunder then tried to retrace the house and saw an old man talking to his robots. That old man seemed to be a tech-savvy person. He told a story in 1954 that he had scored the most fantastic magic show of his career by showing the tricks of thousands of cutting knives. But the story was suddenly interrupted when a mysterious man tried to break into the house. All the robots immediately hid while he was preparing to capture the mysterious man. When the man entered the house, Lawrence, the name of the old man who owned the place, immediately caught him. The mysterious guy who tried to break through the door was Daniel, his nephew. Daniel, who was caught in Lawrence's trap, asked him to open it immediately. After making it out, Daniel said that he was tired of his magic tricks. He also suggested that Lawrence sell the house and move to a nursing home. But he refused because the house had many memories and was very important to him. Daniel finally left, and Lawrence returned to his room to continue his discussion with the robots. He told them that he would never sell his house. On the other hand, Jack and Maggie heard a voice coming from a pot. The rabbit then tried to check it out. The sound came from Thunder. Jack, who didn't like Thunder, wanted to catch him, but their noise woke Lawrence up. Lawrence's reaction was shocking when he saw Thunder. He was very fond of cats and intended to take care of Thunder. Lawrence then gave the orange cat a name called Thunder. All the robots in there love it but not Jack and Maggie. The two animals seemed to be angry at Thunder's presence, while Lawrence, who loved Thunder, took him to bed together. Before going to bed, Lawrence said he performed magic shows in front of the Sultan of Brunei. After that, Thunder tried to sleep, but suddenly, Jack and Maggie came. They accused Thunder had malicious intent on Lawrence. In the morning, the robots prepared breakfast for Lawrence and Thunder. Jack and Maggie were shocked that Thunder was still in the house. When Jack was about to attack Thunder, fortunately, Lawrence caught Jack and put him in a bag. Meanwhile, Lawrence planned to do a magic show. Thunder wanted to go. Although initially hesitant, Lawrence finally gave in and invited Thunder to go with him. Lawrence was going to do a magic show at a hospital. He performed in front of pediatric patients. The kids at the hospital seemed happy to see Lawrence's performance. Then Lawrence and Thunder teamed up to perform the show and got the audience's attention. After the show, Lawrence decided to go back home. While in the suitcase, Jack and Maggie had an evil plan to kick Thunder out. They tried to stab Thunder out of the bag, and this caused Lawrence's bike to wobble, and Thunder fell on the roadside bench again. For the second time, Thunder met that arrogant little dog. He then took the dog to Lawrence's house. Once there, the dog got scared because he had heard terrible rumors about the place and chose not to go with Thunder inside. The dog immediately ran away. Meanwhile, Lawrence was still in the hospital, along with his suitcase. He was injured from falling off the bike, and Daniel came to see him. He told Lawrence to sell his house and stay in the nursing home. Finally, Jack and Maggie knew that Daniel had terrible intentions. On the other hand, Thunder, who came to the house, was sad when he saw Lawrence was not there, and somehow the living robots in the house started entertaining Thunder. While at the hospital, Lawrence was visited by pediatric patients whom he had consoled. Those curious kids then opened Lawrence's suitcase, making the pigeons fly. The two nosy kids were kicked out by a nurse and closed Lawrence's bag. The pigeons then came home and told Thunder that Lawrence had an accident and was now in the hospital. The pigeon also told him about Daniel's bad intentions. 
The scene then turns to the hospital. At that place, Daniel kept on coming to see his uncle. This time, he came to ask Lawrence to sign a power of attorney. Lawrence thought Daniel would pay all the hospital bills. What he signed was a power of attorney for his house. After that, Daniel came to Lawrence's house with his uncle's magic suitcase. Besides, Daniel also brought a client who was going to buy the house. Meanwhile, Thunder realized that Daniel intended to sell Lawrence's house and would drive out all who lived there. The two pigeons then flew and immediately attacked Daniel's client by raining them with bird droppings, making them angry and not buying the house. The upset Daniel immediately kicked the suitcase into the house and went home. After that, Jack and Maggie got out of the bag. However, again they both blamed and were mean to Thunder. They accused him of putting Lawrence in the hospital. Due to all that, Lawrence's house was forcibly taken over by Daniel. Jack tried to blame it all on Thunder and they all argued over how to save the house. Jack finally agreed with Thunder saying he had to defend the house, but Jack would lock Thunder up as a condition of his staying in the house. The next day, Maggie questioned their decision with Jack. He felt that locking up Thunder was not a good decision. But Jack replied that it was their best defense plan because Daniel was allergic to cats. That way, Daniel would get out of that house. But again, Daniel brought a new client to Lawrence's house, Miss Johnson. Daniel willingly brought an umbrella to repel the birds. It caused the same trouble as yesterday. On the other hand, the house's occupants began to carry out their plans to thwart Daniel's intentions. After that, Daniel took his client but only reached the door. He claimed that he had some business to attend to and left. He told Mrs. Johnson to look around the house alone. It turned out that Mrs. Johnson was the owner of the smallest dog Thunder had ever met. After the owner took down the little dog, he got scared and tried to escape. That's when he met Thunder, locked up in a birdcage. Thunder then asked him to open the cage, but the frightened dog refused and said there must be a dog grave in the house. Thunder tried to persuade the dog by giving him his tail. Seeing Thunder's tail, the small dog was excited and hung on its tail, causing Thunder's cage to fall. Mrs. Johnson, who heard the sound of falling objects, immediately turned around, but suddenly her foot slipped, making her fall from the stairs. Thunder, who managed to escape the cage, tried to get out of the house, but suddenly Daniel showed up and caught him with a bucket. But when the bucket opened, it turned out that the one Daniel caught was his client's dog instead of Thunder. Mrs. Johnson, who saw her dog get caught, became angry and slapped Daniel. Thunder then ran away from the house and went to the hospital to see Lawrence. Meanwhile, Lawrence was lying on the bed. Then the kids who were there tried to get close to Thunder and let him in. Lawrence told Thunder to get on his bed. Thunder, who felt guilty without hesitation, rose to the top. Fortunately, Lawrence did not blame him for what happened. Shortly, the nurse came again and told the children to return to their rooms. Thunder managed to escape without getting caught. On the other hand, Maggie and Jack were still training to defend the house. Again, Daniel took a new client to look at the house. Daniel's client had a hobby of taking pictures. He then took a shoot of everything in the house and Maggie, who saw it, was trying to scare him. However, Daniel's client was not afraid of rats and had Maggie locked up. Thunder, who had just reached the house, went straight into the living room. He met Maggie and asked her about the house's current situation. Having entirely understood, Thunder decided to go to Daniel and his client. Daniel, serving his client, suddenly sneezed because his allergy had relapsed. When the client's wife looked around in the kitchen, Thunder and Lawrence's robot worked together to prank her. Daniel was shocked when he saw his client come out full of dirt and accuse the house of being haunted. The angry Daniel, who had lost his temper, immediately left the house. After that, the residents celebrated their success, but not Jack and Maggie, who hated Thunder. They're both constantly trying to blame Thunder for what happened to Lawrence. Jack and Maggie told the rest of the household to arrest Thunder, but they all stood behind Thunder because they thought he was a hero. The next day, someone came to the house. This time it was two guys. Daniel ordered them to dispose of the useless things in the house. Thunder and the rest of the house were trying to scare these people. They made it look like this house was haunted. They finally managed to evict the two men from the house. Daniel, who knew about the incident, got angry and immediately returned to the house. When Daniel entered the house, the evil Jack and Maggie suddenly shot Thunder with firecrackers, making Thunder's mask fall off, and Daniel caught him. He immediately left the house because his allergies recurred. On the other hand, Lawrence, who was still in the hospital, finally found out that Daniel intended to send him to the nursing home. Therefore, he asked to be sent home immediately. While at Lawrence's house, again, Daniel made a move. This time he came with a complete pest repellent kit, and then he started attacking the animals in the house. Thunder, the main target, tried to escape and hid in the attic. The chase was happening. Thunder, who was cornered, was almost shot by Daniel. Luckily, Thunder managed to flee under the floor, but unfortunately, again, he was cornered. When Daniel wanted to unleash his shot, the bullet bounced off, making a suitcase fall on Thunder. After that, Daniel decided to come down from the attic. 
While walking down the stairs, he suddenly fell, and Lawrence's robots drove him out. Meanwhile, Lawrence, who was in the hospital, refused to be sent to the nursing home. But the nurse kept trying to force him. Fortunately, there were children he entertained yesterday, offering help to bring him home. The scene then moves to Daniel, who hasn't given up on making a move. This time, he was carrying heavy equipment to destroy the house. In the meantime, Lawrence and the boys stole the ambulance. Even though it was driven by the children, the ambulance arrived at Lawrence's house. Meanwhile, Daniel was in the yard trying to destroy the house. Jack and Maggie did not have any more plans to stop Daniel. They then tried to wake Thunder. Fortunately, Thunder could get up soon. Maggie immediately apologized because she had misunderstood him. And finally, the house inhabitants began to work together to defeat Daniel. On the other hand, Lawrence then arrived at his house. He immediately scolded Daniel for destroying his house. But Daniel argued that he had the right to do anything because he had a power of attorney for the house. Suddenly, the letter was stolen by a pigeon and taken away. The second the house was about to be destroyed, Thunder had an idea and immediately jumped, hanging from the big ball of heavy equipment. Maggie then went into the engine room to try to scare Daniel. But he wasn't afraid of Maggie and was becoming less alert. Without realizing it, it turned out that Thunder had gotten into the heavy equipment, and Daniel's allergies were relapsing, which made him accidentally destroy his car. At the end of the story, Daniel is defeated by Thunder, and after some time, Lawrence holds another magic show. This time, the animals and the robots have made peace, including Thunder with Jack. Eventually, the show goes very lively, and the movie ends. The moral that can be learned from this movie is to appreciate and respect parents. Apart from that, the solid cooperation of the residents of Lawrence's house managed to thwart Daniel's plans and defeat him. And there is one more fundamental lesson. Never judge a book by its cover, particularly when you are prejudiced against others, because it could be that person who will help us in the future.